In today's world of censored words, two expletives hold a peculiar place. They are used often and rarely meet any serious censure. While these words were once considered taboo, they have been used with increasing frequency throughout the 20th century. This was not always the case. In Europe during the Middle Ages and Renaissance, Christianity was the dominant religion. Because of this, its followers were very careful not to take God by his name in vain. Pious followers would have frowned upon the use of trivial oaths in the Lord's name or Jesus' name, which is why there are taboo words like O oh God or For God's Sake. Over time, religious connotations have fallen away from the words damn and goddamn, which are now used in everyday language. Joan of Arc referred to the English as goddams because she thought they were so common, using the curse word so often that it lost its meaning. And the word hell became just another interjection, such as in the phrases what the hell. And hell, why not? Lexicographer Alan Walker Reed declared that fuck carried the deepest stigma of any word in the English language in the 1930s. It is very much true, the F word has the most notorious aura of transgression throughout the English language. In the Middle Ages, this was not the case. Many prominent people throughout history have been known as fuck, from Roger Fuck Bethenable to Simon Fuckbutter and Henry Fuckbigger, a favorite of King Edward I. For the time these names were normal, Mr. Fuckbutter was a dairyman, but his name had nothing to do with his trade. It was just another name. Fuck was just another word. No one knows how the word became a synonym for sex. It is just a very aggressive word that always sounds like an exclamation no matter how you say it. Even today, just saying fuck in a normal tone sounds aggressive. On the outset, science and shit seem to be on opposite ends of the spectrum. The former is all about collecting data to understand how the world works, while the latter is a physiological function that animals perform when their body requires it. Funny enough, these two terms share a common origin. A millennia ago, a language spoken in Eastern Europe had the word ske, meaning to cut off or slice. Over time, ske spread around Europe. Latin speakers adopted it as sci, which came to be the root of to know, as one gained knowledge by cutting up the world for analysis. Thus, science. Then in the Old English, speakers absorbed ske as sit and used it to describe the physical act of separating excrement from the body. As centuries passed, the word evolved, and sit became the shit we now know today. Shit became taboo after the Protestant dimension switched the dynamic. The word became taboo and very profane and that is why we know it is what we do to do. There's no denying that the words the n-word are offensive. But it wasn't always like that. It has its origins in Latin and was introduced to English by way of Spanish sometime in the 1500 seconds. The term originally comes from Niger, the Latin word for black. In the past, this word was used to describe people of dark complexion with no malice. Throughout the 18th and 19th centuries, the word's derogatory connotation became an established aspect of society, as it was frequently heard in speeches, parables, and children's rhymes. Even as the civil rights movement reduced open bigotry, the word continued to appear in sitcoms into the 1970s. In the black community, the N-word is still used in full, often with the hard R ending dropped in favor of an open A. The N-word is still part of our vocabulary, even though its meaning continues to shift. While the word is most commonly used as an insult or racial slur against black people, it is believed the meaning shall change. This flexibility shows how even the most marked words are still living, evolving, and changing meaning.